Do you know, the reason I use Yamaha goes back to uh, the late 80s. My drum teacher in Birmingham, my first drum teacher was a gentleman called Malcolm Garrett, who was fantastic, who is fantastic, he's one of the finest drummers uh, in the UK, in my opinion. And I remember seeing him at a gig, and he had a brand new hot red Yamaha 9000, as it was called at the time, set with the 22 bass drum, the 10, the 12, the 14, 15 mounted floor toms. and. I just remember seeing that black head with the grey Yamaha logo in it and um, I think I was more interested actually in the look of the drums initially but then when I heard them it was like wow. But also when I sat behind the drums for me it was just the fact that the drums were just so solid everything about them the hardware was just brilliant, it was just so solid and so uh, manoeuvrable, you could get it into different places and get really nice positions with things and unlimited positions. Um, so for me, I think it's always been Yamaha, you know, even if I didn't endorse the drums, I'd play Yamaha. So the drums I actually own are the uh, hybrid maple drums that are here, uh, which were the first of the um, Chinese Yamaha drums that I, that I had. And these are beautiful drums, the maple shells, basically, quite a soft sound. Um, I also have the recording custom drums, which have got the harder shells, the birch hybrid shells, um, which I love for certain things. And I'm really excited because I got hold of a club custom set recently from a friend of mine. I think I've owned about 30 Yamaha drum sets over the 34 years that I've been playing drums. I now, I now own three Yamaha drum sets, so every one of those 27 drum sets that I've let go, I've regretted. I just bought this um, second hand um, from my friend actually in Iceland, this club custom set which is really beautiful as well. And I had a blue swirl one originally, I got rid of it and I thought why did I do that? So now I've got this orange swirl set with the 20, 22 bass drum, 10, 12, 14, 16 rack, tom, uh, rack toms and floor toms and there's matching snare drum which is just beautiful. So um, I think it's horses, of course it's really, I just use them for different musical settings. So probably the answer is that I use the more, the maple shells for more of the softer work, the more jazz kind of orientated work, and so for more of the uh, recording and uh, maybe some of the harder uh, gigs, harder playing gigs, so I'd use the recording custom. But it keeps changing, so um, you can never have enough Yamaha drums, eh? <laughs> I think the thing with the Yamaha hardware is it's just so solid. I'm using the Crosstown hardware now, which is you know, super light. But actually, we've been laying in today here playing in the in the studio, and we've been playing quite hard, and never once did this cymbal stand move slightly at all. So I just love the fact that, certainly with the Crosstown hardware, it's so light, you know, turning into an old man here at the age of 44. It's good on my back for carrying out and into the car and carrying around, but it's just super, super strong and super reliable as well. So you cannot fault the, the hardware. I think the hardware, uh, in my opinion, is, uh, is the greatest out there. I was at an event um, in the audience watching the great Dave Weckl um, performing a Sunday afternoon masterclass at um, Ronnie Scott's here in London. And someone asked Dave in the audience, what's your opinion on the new Chinese Yamaha drums? And Dave gave a really interesting answer, and I totally agree, because you know, I've got a couple of kits now that have been made in China, the recording custom and the absolute uh, hybrid drums here. You cannot fault them, but what Dave said is quite funny actually, it made me smile at the time. He said, said, man, I don't care if these drums are made on the moon as long as they sound good. And actually, these drums do sound absolutely fantastic.
you know, whether they're made in China, whether they're made in Japan, for me, do they sound good? And yeah, the answer with, the, with these new Chinese Yamaha drums, they sound amazing. I mean, they're absolutely perfect drums. The other thing I like about it as well is I will say that, I mean, right now, in this moment in time, people aren't really traveling. But when you travel to different places and you can pick up sort of rental kits, one thing you find with these drums as well is that the consistency with every drum is absolutely second to none. They're perfectly round, the finishes are all great, the hardware is always so reliable, and the fittings on the drums, they never clank. You know, when you're recording, you never get any of these sort of um, funny sounds from lugs and different things going on. So I think, yeah, you know, for me, I have no desire to, to play any other drums. Absolute Hybrid Maple Drum Set was the first Chinese Yamaha set that I played uh, and it's beautiful. It's really a really a lovely kit and I think really this is my go-to drum set. This is the one that I use mainly. However, when I started playing, um, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, my drum teacher, first drum teacher, had a Yamaha 9000 Hot Red set which was beautiful. Um, so guess what my first yeah, Japanese Yamaha set was. Of course, it was a hot red 9000 set. And I always loved that drum set. And you know, I regretted getting rid of it. I wish I could uh, get that drum set back. Um, did a lot of miles on that drum set. So I think now I just wanted another recording custom set. They're just the classic. They're a bit like the Fender Strat of guitars or the Salma Mark VI of tenor saxophones, aren't they? They're, they're the classic drum set, I think. What I would love to see Yamaha do moving forward, and this is gonna sound really nerdy because it's kind of a step back as well. I really wish they would release, I know it's very difficult now, but I really wish they would release the Club Custom set with the swirl paint on it. I just thought they were amazing drums. Um, they're only out for a very short amount of time as well before they moved the production to China, but those drums were absolutely amazing. So just to re-release those drums, no changes, no redevelopment, no nothing, just those drums identically produced as they were. I'll tell you what, I mean they were, they were just fantastic and um, sadly short-lived. The snare drum, which I think I found it today, and I've done something really different today in that I picked out this snare drum which is the Yamaha it's got this little Bill Sanders protection pad on there but this is the Yamaha sensitive five and a half shell drum which is made in Japan it's an older drum and I've always loved this drum I had the wooden rims on it at one point which really worked nicely um, but what I've actually put on this drum which makes a huge difference is this drum head so it's the Remo skin tone which almost feels like a diplomat weight but I think yeah this drum just sounds absolutely beautiful and I've been thinking why didn't I use this drum <laughs> why have I left it in my drum closet for so long but it's come out to me and it sounds great How do I transport my Yamaha drums? Uh, well, for the most part of the moment, my Yamaha drums have been set up at home, so I've been doing lots of practice since we've been locked down with this COVID-19 situation. The drums that are in front of us here remain in this studio where we're working today. Um, I work here quite a lot with my friend 
Glenn Kalis. Um, so the drums stay here. Um, I mean, it varies, to be honest. I mean, sometimes the drums are there at the venue when you arrive, you know, it's a rental kit. Um, other times I stick them in the back of the car and off we go. Other times, you know, for a lot of sort of gigs in London, jazz gigs or whatever, um, I'll just take my cymbals. Crosstown Hardware, which is fantastic. I played at Ronnie Scott's there with the um, support band a couple of times. And what was great was that I could take the cymbals and the Crosstown Hardware on a tube. No problem at all, stick back, whole thing was great. So you can tarry your own hardware. These are protection racket cases. Yeah, I've always used those. Um, not least of all, actually, because when you are carrying the drums in the car, uh, they don't destroy the inside of the car as well, in these soft cases. So for my cymbals, I use a couple of bags. So I found a, a really lovely uh, leather bag, which was made in New York at Steve Max, uh, a friend of Steve Maxwell's actually in Manhattan as a leather manufacturer. And he manufactured these um, cymbal bags, which is fantastic. It's a kind of a beaten up old thing, but I'm kind of superstitious about it now. And I use the uh, Dilgen carry case, which you can just, which is quite a big kind of square plastic thing, which is great. But these are, um, these symbols, um, I know we, we mainly talk about drums here, but the symbols I will say are um, super valuable. These are like, uh, these are like um, part of the family. So they stay in a very well protected Zildjian symbol vault. <laughs> When I'm practicing at home, I live in a house with neighbours literally right next door, so to play an acoustic set would be very difficult. So I was thinking, how can I do this? Do I use an electronic drum set or do I use the acoustic set with mesh heads? Well, this is my instrument, it's one of the instruments that I play. You know, it's my set of drums and there's a connection with it. It's my setup, so everything ergonomically works so I can play around on the drums. So what I have is an identical setup to this, which is my recording custom set at home. What I do with that is I put mesh heads on each of the drums, but not only that, I also put this thing called rim wrap, which is made by a company called Shaw. They used to make the, like, the drumsticks. So it's Shaw rim wrap. And what that does, that basically helps the internal dynamics. So when you're playing the mesh head, it stops you getting that sound going on. So actually the internal dynamics are far better balanced. I add to that then the Zildjian L80 low volume cymbals as well. They're called L80 because they reduce the volume allegedly by 80% of the um, normal um, cymbals that you'd use. So, yeah, that's basically what I, the setup that I use, but most importantly for me, the positions are identical to the setup that I would use on my instrument live. Mm -hmm. 